Welcome in to Red Empress Tarot. I am Patty, and we're doing a reading here today on Are the Romantic Feelings Mutual? This is a two-part collaborative reading with my new channel, The Lightbringer Psychic Medium. So we're doing half of the message through tarot here, and then I'll have you click over to The Lightbringer Psychic Medium to get the mediumship portion of the reading there. Um, trying to get people to learn about my new channel. If you're one of my current subscribers, please go over and subscribe to the new channel. I will be doing most, if not all, of my readings on the Lightbringer Psychic Medium from now on. So um, this is the last reading that I'm planning to put up for some time. Um, so I'd love to see you over there where I'll be working and still around and available. Okay. So, we had three options to choose this tarot reading. The first one is this really cute wood frog. I love him. The second one is the dragon's blood sage. And the third is this beautiful seashell. So go ahead and decide which one resonates for you. If you need a minute to meditate on that, pause the video, and then we're going to go ahead into those three messages. We're just going to do one right after the other. Um, there's no real right or wrong way to choose. I wanted three very different objects um, to make it a little simpler. Sometimes when you have three stones, um, they're a little closer together, but these are very different. So I felt like that was the way to go today. So I'm going to start with the Chrysalis Tarot, and then I'm going to clarify with the After Tarot. So we're going to draw three cards, shuffle here a little bit, and we'll pop them open so you can see. I'll let you actually see the cards before I see them. Okay. So your first card is the Three of Scrolls. Your second card is the Nine of Mirrors reversed. And I'll talk about what these are in a second. Let's get them out first. And your third card is the Five of Stones. Okay. And then we're going to clarify those with the Before Tarot. So this is actually like the scene right before the traditional white or eight tarot that you see. Um, there's also the after tarot, but I wasn't called to use that one this time. Okay, clarifying the three of scrolls, we have the emperor, okay, and clarifying the nine of mirrors. Clarifying the nine of mirrors. Justice, getting major arcana for clarifiers. That's kind of interesting. And then clarifying the five of stones. Is the nine of wands. So the nine of mirrors is the only one that we had in reverse. Bottom of the deck energy here is the Hierophant. I want you to pay attention to this because we have Justice, the Emperor, and the Hierophant here. Look at those three cards together, how similar they are. They're all father figures. They're all father figures. Pay attention to that. I feel like that is going to play very largely into the reading here. And then what's at the bottom of the deck for the chrysalis? Let's see. The wheel in reverse. Okay. So we had another reversal here. So like the Hierophant and the wheel in reverse, um, are the romantic feelings mutual? Um, right off the bat, I'm going to say this person views themselves more as a father figure or um, an older brother or something like that. But what I get from these 
cards and like okay let me let me go one at a time the wheel in reverse things are not going to move the way that you think that they are um it's not meant to go further than it has in this relationship the three of scrolls as the three of swords it's it's, it's um a sad energy it's not a happy energy um, and it's like getting news that makes you sad and the emperor is clarifying that so like it's almost like an authority figure saying this isn't quite right um, and then we've got the nine of mirrors in reverse when you have the nine of mirrors which is cups in the upright it's about like having everything but in the reverse um, you don't have what you want here you're not going to have what you want here and justice and it wouldn't be right if you did um, it's correct that that this doesn't go further for some reason I don't know what it is you know but I don't know um, the five of stones is an, another sad card um, it's a five of Pentacles it's about being locked out of something or being left behind or not um, not feeling um, good enough and that's look this person look look I want you to see what goes with the five of stones because you may be feeling not good enough, but look at the card that goes with it. Look at the nine of, of wands. This person feels protective toward you. There's that wolf getting through, and here's this person protecting you from the wolves. So you may want this person, but this person actually feels protective toward you. They feel more protective than romantic. Um, and I feel like it's right that they are like that for some reason. It's meant to be that way with the with the wheel in reverse if this isn't this isn't a relationship that is meant to be romantic yeah I'm sorry that's probably not what you want to hear um, I'm gonna draw you one of the little cards from my basket my little frog here that, that you chose is really special and I want to mention that this this frog belong, belonged to my grandfather. Um, it's a letter holder, actually. You would put a letter in its mouth, or I, you know, I would put like the little card in its mouth. <laughs> I probably should have done that before the reading. I think I'm going to draw one, but um, this is symbolic to me. This sits in my living room all the time now. This <laughs> it's really special to me. Um, and I'm getting that kind of my grandfather was the male in my life who protected me um, because not all the men in my life did that and he was really special to me and so I feel like this person feels special to you I feel like um, but I feel like it's not the kind of connection that you want it to be or you're hoping maybe you're feeling a lot of deep feelings for this person but maybe they're not um, Maybe it's like confusing about what they are. But I have this little dish of cards and I want to draw one out. My karmic hurt me the way I hurt you. So there's something karmic about this connection. There's something you're supposed to learn from this connection. This person may have rejected you in some way and you feel like not good enough, but like I'm here to tell you, it's not that this person doesn't care about you. Um, s someone else rejected him the same way. He had to learn the same kind of karmic lesson. And it's almost like this is coming around again, like when this person was younger or at some point they had deep feelings for someone and they had to learn that that wasn't the way to go with this relationship. And I feel like this person knows that they maybe not returning your feelings hurts you. But again, with this overall energy of the wheel in reverse, it's not supposed to go that way. So I feel like that's something to really think about. Um, this person is trying to take care of you by leaving romance out of the equation. So this this really says it all. The last card that we drew, this nine of wands. Um, this person is trying to protect you. They care about you. They do. Um, go ahead and click on onto the mediumship reading and see what happens there. I have a feeling 
you're going to get more information that will clarify that. So I hope that it helped you. Um, the link is in the description box to go over there. And um, I wish you love and luck. Take care. Okay, let's go on to option two. Let me just clean this up. Okay. I clear the energy from my decks. Option two, the dragon's blood. Are the romantic feelings mutual? Okay. Get this one. Option two, are the feelings mutual? Okay. So, for those of you who chose option two, the dragon's blood, um, sage, why am I having a hard time coming up with my words? The dragon's blood sage, this is your reading. Okay, so I'm going to start with the chrysalis tarot. Let me make sure my deck is upright. It is. And we're going to draw, we're gonna draw three cards. My deck won't fall out of my hand. It would be helpful. Okay. The first card that we got was the Three of Mirrors. That's a really nice card. That's good energy. Nice energy. One more here. Oh, you know, I was going to pop them out. That one just flew out. So this one is your next card. Um, five of Stones reversed. Also nice. And one more card from this deck. Oh, that was loud. Um, we got the Lovers in reverse. I wonder why. Because I'm getting really good energy here. Okay. Oh, okay. We'll get that message in a second. And then we're going to clarify the three of mirrors with the before tarot. We've got the fool. Mm -hmm. That's consistent. And then the five of stones reversed. This one just flew out to the ace of wands. That really wanted to come out, which is consistent again. But the Lovers in Reverse kind of confuses me on this one. So I feel like you've been a little confused about how this person feels. Because it's like there's all these signs that are good. And then there's like this, I don't know. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's clarify it and find out why it's there. Um, we've got the, oh, the Five of Cups. Okay. Uh, what's behind that? The Strength. Okay, what's interesting, because in the op opposite corner is the Three of Mirrors, which is also a lion, so we're going to leave that there. You could be dealing with someone that's a Leo. Bottom of the deck energy is Temperance. Okay, that's also good. Major Arcana, which we like. And Happy Major Arcana. Um, bottom of the deck for the Chrysalis is the Nine of Mirrors, Nine of Cups, which is good. You've got similar cards to the first one, um, the, but the tone is 180 degrees opposite. Okay, hold on. Let me pour some water here. Okay. Right. Are the romantic feelings mutual? Well, the Nine of Mirrors and the Temperance are your overall energy, which is real positive. The Nine of Mirrors is a gorgeous card. This is the Nine of Cups in most traditional decks. Um, and the mirrors here are actually raindrops. It's like renewal and it's refreshing. Um, the Nine of Cups traditionally is kind of having everything that you want on your own and getting ready to offer a cup to someone. So getting ready to offer that last cup so you can have the Ten of Cups, which is the happiest you can be. 
Um, Ariadne is right below that too, which is the death card here, which is a transformation card. Look at the back of these cards. This deck is all about transformation with the butterflies. And so um, the death card is actually about ending something else so you can have a rebirth. And so I feel like this person has spent some time deciding what they really want and figuring out um, that you will bring them a lot of happiness. This person feels like you bring them a lot of love, but they haven't offered you that cup yet. So the Ten of Cups isn't here. We've got the Nine. So this person hasn't made an offer. Um, but with Temperance here, I feel like they're getting balanced and getting ready. They might have just come out of something else that wasn't balanced. And so this person is taking a little time to get balanced. But I feel like this beautiful floaty energy, the like really happy energy, um, the Three of Mirrors here, this Three of Cups is all about friendship and celebration and um, see the lion laying down with the lamb. It's like safety where the, it's like this person feels safe where they didn't feel safe before. And then the Fool is clarifying that the Three of Cups, uh, Three of Mirrors, same thing, which is is about getting ready to go on a journey. You or this person might be animal lovers too. Cause there's a lot about animals here. Um, but like, okay, so in the before tarot, like in the in the regular tarot, the fool is getting ready to jump off a cliff and just setting off on a journey without kind of thinking about it. But right here, they're stopping to smell the roses, they're actually literally stopping to smell the roses. And so your person is taking a breath, a beat, right? They haven't offered you anything yet. I don't think they're quite ready to do that, but I think that they want to. Are the romantic feelings mutual? I'd say yes. Five of stones in reverse. So five of stones is five of pentacles where you feel locked out of something, but they're coming out of that energy where they're feeling sad. They're coming out of a sad energy and um, actually feeling passion again and um, the desire to take some action after a period of sadness. And the leverage in reverse here is where um, that was confusing. Like, I feel like you've been confused about how this person feels because they haven't been fully showing you, um, you know, with the five of cups here, I feel like this person has had kind of bad luck and love, but that came out with the strength card. So like this person is regrowing their strength and getting ready to love again. And it's like a happy, this, this first card coming out, the three of mirrors is, is it's happiness. It's celebration. It's good energy. You've got really good energy in all of your cards here. I was really concerned about the lovers in reverse um, and then coming out with the, the five of cups. However, clarified by the strength, it's like where I was unhappy before, where, where it didn't work out before, I'm, I'm like growing in strength and this energy that they have been in might have bled over to you. So it was confusing because you feel one thing from them and then they're, they're, they, they seem sad or they just seem like they're not good. It's like because they're coming out of something like they're they're at the temperance. They're getting balanced here. Yeah, and then there's the Ten of Wands underneath the Temperance. They've been through something really challenging, some really hard, but like Knight of Wands is under that, but they're getting ready to go forward. You know, we've got the Ace of Wands here, and then we've got the Nine of Wands here. This is this is a desire to, to come forward, to take action, and under that is the Three of Pentacles, which is all about um, collaboration and partnership, building something new with someone. Four of Wands was under that, so there's this desire for stability in relationship as well. Okay. Well, all right, my pile two, my dragon's blood option, um, sage, beautiful sage. I believe that this person definitely does return your romantic feelings. I just think it's been confusing because they're in a, this period of, of changing it up, like going from a bad energy to a good energy with you. Um, yeah, yeah, the romantic feelings are mutual for sure. 
I hope that helps. If you want more information, make sure and click over to the second part of the reading, or you don't have to watch them in order, but the other part of the reading on my new channel, The Lightbringer Psychic Medium, where we're doing a mediumship reading over there. I'm channeling your messages, and um, you can pick the same option here as there. You can pick a different option here as there. I'm using the same markers, but you do it however you want to, whatever feels right to you. Um, the link is in the description below. Take care, and I will see you next time. Okay, I'm going to go on to option three. So let me clear the decks here. Clear the decks. Isn't that like a, a navy term, right? Different kind of decks. All right. Okay, grab some water. Okay, for those of you who chose option three, the seashell, this will be your reading, your tarot reading. I'm Patty, and um, my channel, The Lightbringer Psychic Medium, is doing a collab with this channel. They're both me was a different kind kind of reading and this channel you'll get a tarot reading on the other channel you'll get a mediumship reading which is a purely channeled reading um, the link for that is in the description below if you want to go watch that one too and get more information be great okay so we're asking are this person's feelings the romantic feelings mutual with your person can't talk here either first pile had no problem talking Second pile, I was flubbing my words a little bit, and now I'm doing it again. Okay, we're going to start with the Chrysalis Tarot. And we're asking the question, are your person's feelings mutual? Are this person's feelings mutual? Romantic feelings specifically. I want to be real specific with the reading. Feelings could mean anything. Are the romantic feelings mutual? Okay. You get to see the cards before me. That's our first card. Two of stones in reverse. Okay. I'm drawing three tarot cards from the Chrysalis Tarot and then I'll draw clarifiers from the uh, before tarot. Cards just want to fly out. This this pile has a lot to say. I keep getting flyers. I'm not taking those. We're popping them open. So, okay. Your second card is here. Uh, the Eight of Scrolls, which is also the Eight of Swords. last card is the mime or the page of spirals. Spirals are wands, so page of wands. Interesting that it's the mime though. Mimes are silent, right? They try and emote and they, they try and show you every way to convey something without speaking and so that's interesting to me. Um, bottom of the deck energy on the chrysalis is um, Ariadne, which is death card here, which um, in this deck, like this came up in the last option too. Look at the back of the Chrysalis Tarot. It's butterflies. It's all about transformation. And so there's this ending for a new beginning here is the overall energy from that deck. And then we're going to clarify, keep having cards flying out, the Empress here. <laughs> okay, I'm not taking that. We're just going to pop them open. God, cards just wanting to fly. King of Wands wants to fly. Okay, come on. Good Lord. Oh, sorry, it keeps happening. Sometimes I feel like taking them, sometimes I just don't. So clarifying that Two of Stones. 
Uh, we've got the Two of Cups upright. And then clarifying the Eight of Scrolls, please. Why is the Eight of Scrolls here? Or the Eight of Swords in most decks? Stones or Pentacles? Clarifying the Eight of Scrolls, we have Queen of Cups. Okay. I'm already getting an answer here, but well, there's a lot to say though. Um, clarify the page of spirals, the mime. Uh, Queen of Wands, we've got another, we have two queens here. Hmm. I just want to show you that below that was the hanged man. I'm just going to throw that on the side here because I feel like it's important to talk about. From what I see here, it's important to talk about. Bottom of the deck energy um, is the Eight of Wands. You know, overall energy here for this option is uh, Death and the Eight of Wands. So there's this um, ending for a new beginning and a lot of energy going forward in this. Are the feelings mutual? Well, it's a resounding yes, um, but let's talk about what it says here, because I want to give you all the information that's here, not just part of it. So, like the first, the most obvious thing I need to talk about here is the two queens that came out one right after the other, Queen of Cups and Queen of Wands. So, um, we have a feminine energy involved in this situation, which is very loving and um, giving. Um, we have a feminine energy that is very fiery and passionate. The Queen of Cups might be more temperate in her emotions or might tend toward um, um, like being very emotional, where the Queen of Wands might be very fiery in her speech, may like be like hair trigger and so just so you know like this could be a same-sex relationship where these two people are involved but what I'm getting more is that it's for for more people it's a love triangle relationship with a masculine and two feminines but I do see an ending and a lot of energy being put into a new beginning so I feel like there's a masculine energy here who is involved with this Queen of Wands person who is moving on from the Queen of Wands because we got that last and it's clarifying the mime which is that like trying to convey something without actually using words so there's something about this person having a hard time speaking they're trying to, sh to use their actions to convey how they feel and what they mean when they need to speak up <laughs> Honestly, um, it's a stubbornness. There's a ram behind this mime. There's a real stubbornness about doing the don't want to do it, don't want to do it. So let's start with the two of stones here. So we have the two of stones in reverse. And when you have the two of stones in the upright, which is two of pentacles, and it's about um, having two options and not want, knowing kind of which one to go with. It's having two tangible things up in the air and being kind of like stuck between the two things and I see the two rocks there and I feel like this person was stuck between a rock and a hard place um, but it's in the reverse person is coming out of that energy and that is clarified by the two of cups so this person knows who they want to offer their cup to and I feel like it's you And then we have the Eight of Scrolls clarified by the Queen of Cups. And the Eight of Scrolls in traditional tarot is this person that is like hand tied. Their hands are tied. They have a blindfold. They're surrounded by eight swords, but not in this deck. So in this deck, there are all of these scrolls up in the air. And there's this woman or female person, female type person, um, who is divining what is up there and it's almost like there's this energy of getting a lot of information having access to a lot of information and using your intuition so I feel like 
your person has gotten all of these pieces of information, it's like puzzle pieces falling into place. It's like they had one puzzle piece, but that wasn't enough. I'm seeing in my head the those um, games where you like have this puzzle and then they just reveal one piece and you have to guess what it is and you can't guess and then they reveal a piece over here and you can't guess and you gotta like see how many pieces have to be revealed before you know what the picture is behind it and I'm getting that like there's all these pieces of information that this person need to have and they were like slowly falling into place but they couldn't be put together until you have enough of them right and that's clarified by the queen of cups like this this person has gotten enough information that they know who the queen of cups is now they know where their emotional love um love should go where their emotional fulfillment will be but there is this element of this person not speaking this person needs to talk and, and probably specifically to the queen of wands because there is an end happening and this person lets to, needs to let this Queen of Wands know that the end is happening. The hanged man energy is something that we saw on the bot, you know, like flip out. And I feel like um, <laughs> this person has been in a little bit of a limbo and it has something to do with not speaking the truth. It's like you can't just, it's almost like this person is planning to pack their stuff in the middle of the night and go without speaking. And maybe there's a reason for that that we don't know, so let's not judge, right? But it's kind of what I'm getting is this person is going to let their actions speak for them. And, I mean, there may be a reason. You know, maybe with a hanged man, you know, you're usually in this position. You put yourself in this position. This person isn't, like, super tied there. They're hanging by one foot. They could get up out of there if they want. So this person put themselves in a limbo, like in, in a timeout to decide what to do with all this information um and in that in that place they they really came to the conclusion that they needed to let their actions speak rather than their words it could be you know with the queen of wands can be very fiery and very bad tempered when they're in the reverse it came on the upright but either way i feel like it could be this person is trying to keep this person in the upright because maybe if they flip this person upside down if they if they upset this person it gets real bad and so could be that leaving the way that they're going to leave is the better way to do it to avoid a giant fight like yeah so I'm not going to judge here but I do get an ending for a new beginning and I get two of cups here is soulmate energy that's I mean there's a soul connection here are the romantic feelings um, mutual? Absolutely, absolutely. It's just, it's just there's a lot going on here. Um, in relationship-wise, there's a lot like things have to fall into place, puzzle pieces have to fall into place for this to work. But I, I know I'm like getting into so much more than I need to here in this reading. But like, if I see it, I want to say it, right? But yes, the romantic feelings are absolutely mutual this person feels like you're their emotional fulfillment and like the eight of wands again six of cups below that that's my twin flame card i don't i'm not pulling that phrase out a lot these days but for those of you who resonate with twin flame or could be a soul connection past life connection um this is confirmation for you guys you should have that. All right. Um, to see the other part of this reading, click the link in the description box to go to the Lightbringer Psychic Medium and choose the option you want. You can choose the seashell that you chose here, or you can choose a different option, whatever works for you. Um, that one will be a completely mediumship reading. It's all going to be channeled, um, and I hope it brings you further clarity. All right. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you next time.